This is the secret weapon we have used, uh, massive MIMO, uh, multi-antenna processing uh, over multi over three-dimensional, 128 antenna elements. Um, contrary to popular belief, it's actually more compact than the legacy uh, 2.5 radio we have deployed. If you look at the traditional gate transmitted and receive radios, you have a separate radio and antenna. With massive MIMO, it weighs about the same in total, but it's a one compact box. So it's a lot simpler to deploy, and it actually scares the zoning people a lot less. Uh, when we show them a massive MIMO, we should not call it massive MIMO <laughs> next time. We need a better name when we go to, uh, to the jurisdiction. But we have deployed hundreds of this now all over the country, running LTE Advanced. Um, and and uh, the latest one was in the Super Bowl 53, we had 32 of this built with Ericsson around the, uh, the Super Bowl area, um, it performed better than we expected. Uh, speeds were extremely high, um, more importantly, a lot of capacity. Uh, we delivered 25 terabytes of data on Super Bowl Sunday itself. There's two and a half times more than the previous Super Bowl, which was the highest ever. So it's a massive memo seems to work really well where in public events as an example, where there's a lot of demand for for tonnage, there's a lot of users, and that's when it thrives. Um, we push the technology one step further for 5G, where we use it for split in split mode. What that means is that we use basically the still, since there's so much antenna, we use half of it for LTE, and we're still able to get better coverage than what we had before with a legacy system. And then we reserve the other half for 5G NR. So this is what we call split mode, essentially. So with the same hardware, we kill two birds with one stone, essentially. So that when you build an upgrade system with massive MIMO, we're able to simultaneously uh, broadcast LTE and 5G at the same time. What we have learned since then is that this is probably one of the few early systems where you can replicate your 5G coverage over LTE completely. You absolutely cannot do that with millimeters of wave. Right, but with, 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 uh, with sub-6, with massive MIMO, we can get the exact same coverage between LTE and 5G from the same macro tower. We use 60 megahertz for LTE and 60 megahertz for 5G, which means that a customer who has the latest, let's say, that's the, uh, the, SAPS, the uh, LG phone, the, uh, the 5G phone or the, or the hotspot from HTC, you will get the benefit from 120 megahertz of bandwidth in a dual connect mode. Right, that's a significant amount of capacity and speeds. Okay? So, one thing we learned as well in the, in the last year, in the race to 5G, there's actually more than one way to build a 5G network. Um, we also learned that some 5G networks are built by their marketing department. <laughs> um, here, here's, a, here's another example uh, where, where they actually change the fonts of the 5 and the G uh, just so that their customers would think that it is 5G. And as the author of the article wrote correctly, this is a very lazy way to build a network. Um, there are some who actually bolted out the gate so fast that they suddenly remembered that what they built was not really a 5G standard. So they became the first company to halt 5G uh, in the world. Essentially, there's no shortcut to building a 5G network. And, and you know, building the 5G network old-fashioned way is a lot of work. And that's what we've been doing the last 12 months. I'm going to share with you a video. This is not a marketing sizzle video. It, it is really showing you how the sausages were made in Chicago. Everybody loves sausages, but nobody likes to see how it's made. <laughs> <laughs> so this video is dedicated to the engineers at Sprint, at Qualcomm, at Samsung Networks and LG, who hasn't slept the last few, the last few weeks, uh, banging their heads on the wall, trying to get synchronization to work, uh, eating cold pizza, drinking stale beer, uh, to get this network built. And so let's watch uh, what they have done. Can we play the video? which includes the great city of Chicago. We're about to light up Sprint's mobile 5G network with 76 active 5G...
Hi, I'm Laurie Aves. I'm Sprint's Vice President of the Central Region, which includes the great city of Chicago. We're about to light up Sprint's mobile 5G network. With 76 active 5G sites, it's one of the world's largest mobile 5G footprints. We're going to run around town and do some tests of our 5G network. So we're going to some of the very first 5G sites and we'll get to see the, the true impact of uh, having a massive micro radio. And we'll be able to see the difference between 5G and 4G clearly on our phones. Alright guys, we're here at our first location and we're going to do a test of our 5G connection. Oh, <laughs> look at that speed! Oh my gosh! 5G is for real! It is so exciting to be part of building Sprint's first mobile 5G network. This is incredible. Well, I see that that's connected to me. Yep. Yeah. yeah, that's good. So we can see that connection that going through. Yeah. The traffic is going to be split between 4G and 5G. So we're here at our next location. We're going to check out our 5G signal. It's <laughs> <laughs> amazing. Yep, yeah, really good signal. We've had a great day today in Chicago checking out the progress of our 5G mobile build. Keep an eye out in the coming months for the launch of America's mobile 5G network in nine major cities, including Chicago. markets uh, will all be on air by the first half of 2019. Some of them will be on air uh, in, uh, in starting in May. Uh, the markets in New York, Washington, uh, Los Angeles, and Phoenix are uh, Nokia markets. Um, Houston, and in the previous page, Atlanta, uh, Dallas, Fort Worth, Kansas, is Ericsson, and uh, Samsung have to fill the, uh, the uh, Chicago market uh, that we're also using their equipment as well. So making good progress. Now, the, the technology that we have developed with massive MIMO for 5G and, and for the deployment is not just foundational for Sprint, but also for the combined company. If the merger is approved, we believe that together we can build a much better and bigger network that each of us can do. 